Hi, and welcome to week three of Creative Kids Club. This week, we are going to be working on a couple of different faux stained glass projects. That's fake stained glass projects. And this is going to let us explore opacity and translucency, um, which means stuff that blocks light and stuff that lets lights through. So let's take a look at our bags and see what's there. So you'll firstly have just a stack of random pieces of tissue paper. And you'll have five little pots. I'm taking these out carefully just to make sure they don't spill. They shouldn't, but it can't hurt to be careful. All right, so these, you'll have three random colors of paint. So it won't necessarily be these three colors. You'll have one that is uh, glue. And you'll have this one which is actually um, just canola oil. You also have a popsicle stick. And you'll have some paper. You should have two sheets of wax paper, two sheets of construction paper, and two sheets of just plain ordinary white paper. You also might need a little bit of water, your paintbrush from last week, and your scissors from week one. So let's get started. So for the first project, you're going to want your wax paper, your three colors of paints, your paintbrush from last week, or another one if you have one your stick, and later on you're gonna want a pair of scissors. Now, in addition to these three paint pots, if you have any paint left over from last week, you're welcome to use that as well. So we're gonna take one of these pieces of wax paper, and wax paper, you can already see light through, which is why it's our base for this. Now we're gonna take our paints, and we're not going to do anything in particular. We are going to take our paints and just spread them around. You can use a stick for that, or you can use a brush for that. And what you want is a paint all over the place and kind of thick, but not like globby. So I'm gonna put some dots here. I got my water, a little paper towel just to take that off. I'm going to put some orange on here. I'll put some orange right through there. Now don't be too careful about this because these paints are not going to stay where you're putting them right now. But you don't have to be completely random. You could... Uh, draw a design it will get distorted later it will get all mixed up I'm just gonna splatter a bit of this on here take that off brush off and then put a bit more green in here. All right, so I've kind of just got paint everywhere. Yours won't look like this. You might have lines of paint. You might have zigzags. You might have actually drawn a picture of something or you might have splatters and dots everywhere, but that should be about enough. Take this, wipe this off as well. All right, now we take our second piece of wax paper and we put it down right on top of the first. 
and we squish and we spread and we get all those colors all over the place. Squish over this, so there we go. Squish this. And don't worry about getting to the edges of the wax paper. We are gonna cut this out later. There, that is about as mixed up as I want to get it. Now don't be too rough with it because wax paper, um, it seems pretty sturdy, but it will rip if you, you're too rough with it. So now that we've got that, you're starting to, it's starting to be thin enough to see some light through. But now is when you can do some neat things with it. And you can take your stick and you can draw some lines through it like that. Or you can push some down like that. And just your lids of your, you have your little paint pots, so you can go through and if you press them in, you're going to make circles. Now any design that you make on this with the stick or the lid or anything else you find anywhere nearby you are going to be able to see through when you put it up to the light. Maybe I wanna put my initials on there, right in the middle. You might wanna draw a little heart over here, a little heart over here. And once you've done that, it's all still stuck together. It will divide a bit if you're doing a little rough with it. So make sure it's all still nice and stuck together. Set that aside to dry. You don't want to do anything with it now until that paint is solid. Because if you try to cut it now, that paint is just going to squish out the sides. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to set it aside. Now here's something I did earlier. You can see I did get a little rough with it so it will make holes if you're too rough. But once it's dry, you can cut out a shape. You can cut out a square, you can cut it into a different shape if you want to, but you can cut out any shape you want. And then remembering the first week when we did our um, construction paper frames, I've included two pieces of construction paper so you can do that again if you want to. Now it is not necessary to put a frame on this but sometimes it looks very nice. Whether you want to put a squares frame around the outside or the shape of a frame of maybe you drew hearts everywhere and you want to do a heart frame. You can do that as well. And here's a different one I did. Just to show you what happens when you really push down on it. It'll make these neat designs. And this one I haven't cut out at all. But you'll be able to tell when it's dry. That's not coming off at all anymore. You don't want to peel it off necessarily, but that's just to show you. So that is the first way to make something that is uh, a faux stained glass type of thing and it's translucent. And as you remember, translucent is when you can see the light through it. Now for the second way, you're gonna want a piece of just the plain white paper. You can use the whole thing if you want, but I don't wanna use the whole thing. So I'm gonna divide mine. You can do that with your scissors. Or you can do it like this, where you just fold it in half, you press down on the fold, and it will tear right along that fold, right like that. Now this method is using tissue paper. And as you can see right now, this piece of paper is not translucent. So it will block light. But the tissue paper is very thin and you can really see stuff through it. So we're going to create a design on our page using our tissue paper. This can be um, whatever you want it to be. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing by any means. You can tear the tissue paper or you can cut the tissue paper. 
I think to start with, I would like to make um, a flower. So I'm gonna do that with my orange and you should have just a variety of different ones here. So I'm going to take my tissue paper, I'm gonna fold it over a couple of times. And it's so thin and still be easy to cut. And I'm just gonna cut just a little flower petal shape out of that. I'm gonna cut along the fold so they aren't stuck together. And I'll have a bunch of shapes that I can put on. And what you'll discover while you're doing this, glue, and just use the same stick you were using before, just to put a bit of glue on there and hold it down where you want to. This is the part where it does get messy. I'm gonna put it right there. And you can put more glue on top. Now, if you find you're having a bit of trouble spreading the glue or you just want it thinner, just add some water to your glue right there in the pot and that should uh, really help you out. So there's one petal down. I'm just gonna stick this one down since I already have lots of glue on there. Now, what you'll find as you do it is the more layers you have, the less light is gonna get through. So some of this is overlapping, but some of it isn't. I'm gonna put it over here. Put a bit of this on top. Now, if you want it to really look like the stain, kind of stained glass you'd see in a stained glass window or in a church. You might want some kind of thick, thick, dark lines around it. You can do that by using your construction paper again to make a frame for it and cut out perhaps a design of a heart or a flower or really anything. Or if you have a black marker, once this has dried, whatever you've done, you can just draw thick lines around it and the light will not get through those. I put one more petal on this one, right there. I think I've got two pieces. I do have two pieces there. So that is well and stuck down. I've got lots of glue all over the place here. I'm just gonna set this down here on the lid. And I've got some green here. I'm gonna use it the same way. I'm going to fold it over and just cut a couple of nice leaves out of it. And anything that goes on here goes on the same way. Oh, I got something stuck to here. Well, it'll just come off. There we go. Little bit of glue on there. And we'll put a couple leaves down here. Right there. Now maybe for the rest of my page, I want something completely different. And I can just take this and I can just tear a piece off. And I'll take a bit of yellow and I'll tear some pieces off here. I can just put those on any old way I want, on their own or overlapping. And if you overlap different colors, it's going to blend those colors. So I have my, uh, if you remember from the color wheel last week, my blue on the bottom, my yellow on top, and where they intersect here, I've got a nice green. I'm just gonna throw a little more blue. So we have multiple layers of blue here. Get a bit of a darker blue. 
And I can fill up the rest of my page like this if I want. Just keep going right through. So you can stop when you've got a design you like, or you can fill up the entire thing. But what'll happen, and again, we're gonna have to wait until this is dry before we do anything else. What'll happen is we realize we're still on white paper and white paper is still not translucent. The light does not come through it. So we're going to have to change that. So I'm gonna take the other half of my paper to show you how this works. Because again, you do not wanna do that until this is dry. You wanna get rid of your glue there. This is where you need this little package of oil. And this is just regular old canola oil that you would find in a kitchen. And you're gonna need a little bit of paper towel. I've got a little bit of Kleenex here. Um, a cotton cotton ball or a cotton swab or even I mean if you've got nothing else and you're able to clean them even just your fingers will work we take this oil and we put it on the paper I would imagine if you've never done this on purpose you've probably done it by accident you spilled oil on something in the kitchen and it soaks right into it forever So what you do is you do this on the back of your of your tissue paper design. And once you've done that, it does become translucent. So the light will come through here. And I'll show you that on these designs. So here is what some of these are going to look like when you're done. Now the first one has, it's just plain white paper still. So you can see the light is not coming through it. Here is one where we've put the oil on the back and you can really see that light is coming through and showing you that tissue paper. It also shows you that one layer of tissue paper lets in more light than multiple layers. And where you cross them, you get different colors. Over here, I've done a bit of outlining just to show you what that would look like. And then here is a finished flower where you can see the petals and the overlaps and the leaves. And then this one, of course, is the one we did on the wax paper, which was already translucent, so it already let the light through. So you can see that where the paint is thinner, we see more light. And we can really see where we put those marks, where we put those circles and where we put those, those uh, marks with the popsicle stick. And you'll see anything else you put on there as well. That's what you'll see best. And these aren't the only ways to make a kind of a faux stained glass as well. There are many other ways to do it. And the trick to it is finding a way to let the light through. I hope you had a good time today and we'll see you next week.